So Rachel, it's all yours. All right. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Really nice to see all of you here today. Um, and thank you so much for the invitation to join and tell you a little bit more about Goodwin Living and the amenities that we have and how we can support individuals in our community. I am joined by my colleague, Eileen Spinella. She is our um, Director of Community Partnerships with Goodwin Living. And so she will also be um, joining today's presentation to share with you a little bit more about what Goodwin Living offers. Um, Eileen, I know was having yeah. a little bit of uh, te technical issues I'm, with her camera. She is there. Um, I'm, so I'm here. Yes. I'm so, so I, really, I really apologize. Uh, you have to just use your imagination. Um, and I, I'm happy to be here. I I, I, um, I I did this for you guys, I think about two years ago. Um, you know, we love partnering with you and uh, we hope you find the information uh, helpful and uh, love being with Wendy anytime I can. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I will go ahead and share my screen for you all. We do have a, um, a, PowerPoint that we just wanted to bring up here. Okay, can you all see my screen? Yep. Yeah. All right, excellent. Great. So, so, do you want me to take it from here, Rachel? Yes, oh, please, okay. thanks, Eileen. Yeah, so we have, it's a short PowerPoint. Um, I think um, the value of, of the conversation is the conversation. So, you know, we'll take questions and, and talk about uh, anything you, you, anything that, that you need to know or want to know about Goodwin Living. So this is Goodwin Living at a glance. Um, just wanted to give you a little bit of background for those that are not familiar with us. Um, I think um, for those longtime um, people that live in Arlington, I think you're probably pretty familiar with Goodwin, but our mission um, is to support, honor, and uplift the lives of older adults and the people who care for them. Our vision is to expand the places and ways we serve older adults, and we're going to talk more about that. Our approach is we are a non-for-profit, faith-based senior living and healthcare organization. We ensure that we can all thrive and live our lives with a purpose at any age. So Goodwin House um, Alexandria was established and opened in 1967. It was the first life plan community. And then 20, almost 20 years later, um, we opened up um, Goodwin House, Daly's Crossroads. So you can go to the next slide, yeah. And that was opened up in 1987, the Life Plan Community. And today we have, you can see, we have grown. Now, um, a couple of years ago, we actually had a name change. So the the, the the corporation was known as Goodwin House. Um, and we, we took a look at that and we really kind of felt it didn't represent all that we have to offer today. So the, the corporate or the umbrella name is called Goodwin Living. And then we have um, Goodwin House Alexandria, Goodwin House Bailey's Crossroads. Um, we have Goodwin House Home Care, The View, and we're gonna talk about all of the other services as we go on. but. I don't know if people are familiar that we actually made that change. I think it's been about two years ago. Okay. So um, Goodwin House Alexandria and Goodwin House Bailey's Crossroads, they are what we consider life plan communities. And you can go to the next, next slide, Rachel. Um, so life, life plan community, for those of you who don't know, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, they call it life care. Um, it's fee for service contract option. So it, there is a, a, a an entrance fee, entrance fee that you put down, and then there's monthly fee monthly fees on on top of that. Um, it includes in, it, the whole continuum of care, basically independent living, assisted living, memory support, skilled rehab, and long term care nursing. And then we have the specialized services such as home care, rehabilitation, home health, and hospice. And then. <clears throat> About a year and a half ago or two years ago, we we acquired the, the Hermitage in Northern Virginia um, that it had been there for a long time. M many of you are probably familiar with that. It's called The View by Goodwin Living now. Um, this is actually a rental community. It's not a life, life care community. 
So it's fee for service month to month, um, includes independent living, assisted living and long-term care nursing. And again, we offer the home care, rehabilitation, home health and hospice services within, within those um, facilities. <clears throat> so, so as you guys, you know, the synergy here is, is you know, with, with Arlington Neighborhood Village, the, the whole concept of aging in place. And, and, and that's, these are options for people who wanna age in place. So we have developed these programs, these offerings, um, not only for the for the residents that live within our communities, but also for those who are outside in the community. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So good when living at home. Wendy, I know you said you had some questions about this. Um, <clears throat> I will tell you right now, I'm not I'm not the expert here. Um, but we could we could always provide some additional information if you have questions about it. But basically, um, again, it's 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 a program that wants to keep people in their homes. Um, they it's it's kind of a, a a mixture between an insurance program and 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 a care management program. So we're we are caring for people in their homes. We provide care co coordination. Um, and we do have um, provide things such as we do have social events, annual check-ins, home safety assessments. So they have established different programs, um, different financial options, and depending on what the financial option is, is, is depends on the services that are provided. Um, so I know that um, the care coordination is, is kind of a big piece here. So for those people that are living at home, that, that need some guidance or need some help with coordinating their care. There are, there is, we have social workers um, that are a part of this program that, that do help um, with the care coordination. So I will leave it there for now and take any questions um, as, we, as we, at the end of here. Um, and then I'm, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Rachel because Rachel really focuses on um, our home, home health program and our rehabilitation program. Thank you, Eileen. So um, as you can see, under Goodwin Living at Home, we have some information about Goodwin Rehabilitation. So under Goodwin Rehabilitation, this is our outpatient clinic, which is located at The View, Alexandria. So it is off of Beauregard, in Alexandria, right across from Goodwin House, Alexandria. Um, this rehab clinic is available to you. You don't have to be a resident in order to utilize it. So if you have an order for outpatient therapy and you're interested in utilizing our space and working with our team at our clinic, you are welcome to, to access that and to use that under rehabilitation in an outpatient clinic. This involves physical therapy, occupational therapy, cognitive and speech therapy services. Now, when we're looking at physical therapy, we're looking at the balance, endurance, strength, mobility that an individual has. Occupational therapy, think of this as the function and strength that you have in your daily activities. And even in the activities that you love to do, I've had a lot of people tell me in um, just my time in, in working um, in the therapy space that they don't need occupational therapy. They don't work anymore. But occupational therapy covers the function and, again, the strength and the ability that, that you might have to do the things that you love. So gardening, baking, maybe there's... Um, crafts that you love to, to do? What, what, is, what is your dexterity, your, your hand strength like to, to perform those tasks? Occupational therapy is looking at that. And they're also diving deep into the safety um, uh, of an individual and just making sure that they're, that they're getting around safely. Um, speech therapy looks at swallowing and again, cognition is on here. So looking at um, communication strategies for, for folks um, who might need some cognition support. 
Uh, so again, these are offered, um, we do have outpatient therapy on our campuses as well. Um, Goodwin House Alexandria, Goodwin House Bailey's Crossroads, but that clinic at The View is available for anyone to be able to access it. Um, and then looking at Goodwin Home Health, this next slide. So I am our home health marketing manager. A big part of my role is to educate our community on our home health services. So home health, uh, I, I get a lot of joy in sharing about the differences here um, between home health, home care. We just talked about outpatient therapy in a clinic setting. So Goodwin Home Health entails nursing and therapy in the home. So this is a great option for you if you might have recently been hospitalized, if you might have recently been at a skilled nursing facility, you're going home and you need that additional support to get to back to your function, back to, back to where you were prior to this incident that might have had you hospitalized or at a facility. So our goal is to work on that strength and provide that support that is needed when you go home. So these services are provided in the home. Skilled nursing entails services such as wound care. It entails services such as disease management, medication management. Um, it also includes any sort of lab services. So if you need blood drawn at home, this is something a nurse can assist with. Therapy, it again, is that physical occupational speech therapy services in your home. So a clinician will come to your home, help you with your mobility, balance, function, safety, directly in your environment. And this is key because they're looking at how are things set up currently and how can they support you with maybe adding additional equipment? Maybe there are things that um, can be moved around like rugs within your home um, that that can help with safety. So they're going to be looking at all, all of this and supporting you in that way. And then, of course, speech therapy, working on that swallowing, cognition, communication within your home setting as well. Now, we do, with our services, have a social worker that is full-time on our team, and she is an incredible resource because what she's looking at is um, any sort of resource management. She's looking at providing assistance with advanced directives, documentation such as that to help folks get that in place when needed. So she is a great support for um, for patients when, again, they, they might be coming home, they need some additional support with navigating the, ser the services, um, and, and maybe even a new diagnosis. She's, would, she's an excellent resource to help individuals navigate a new diagnosis and, um, and just talk about some next steps. We also provide home health aid services under, um, under home health. Now, home health aids under Medicare and under insurance, they don't, it's not quite as, uh, quite as many hours of assistance as you would find from a private pay standpoint. So under Medicare and commercial insurance under home health, a home health aid is looking at assistance with grooming, oral care. Um, those are those are really the things that they're looking at, assistance with bathing and things like, like that. So they're, they unfortunately, there's not quite as much um, hours that are provided under insurance, under at least commercial insurance and Medicare through home health, but it is a service available to you. So there are some, some hours in there. Um, again, this is something that is covered by Medicare. So if you have traditional Medicare, um, even if you might have a Medicare Advantage plan, they oftentimes will offer some sort of uh, benefits, out-of-network benefits, if, if, if they might not be directly in network. So again, these are services that are available through you covered by insurance. And Rachel, we've got a couple of questions if you'd like to address those now. Sure, I would um, love to. One of them was about uh, the home health service. 
Is that something that you contract in advance before you need it, or is it a pay-as-you-go kind of arrangement? Such a good question. So when it comes to home health, we can be proactive when it comes to, let's say, a surgery that you might have scheduled. If you have a surgery scheduled and support is needed post-surgery for that nursing support, maybe for, for a wound or that therapy to get you back to that strength and, and function and helping you through um, that post-surgery assistance, we can be proactive in that way. Now, when it comes to um, any sort of incident such as hospitalization or skilled nursing facility stay, although you might not anticipate those events that lead you to those facilities, um, our goal and our role is to coordinate with the staff at these facilities in order to get services lined up. So this isn't something that you would need to call and 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 work out with with us. Um, we can work out we can work that out with that facility. So that's of course more of the of not so much a proactive approach, but if you do find that you need that support and you're getting discharged, you can certainly mention to a, to a social worker, to the case management team, hey, this is the team I'd like to work with. This is who I'm interested in supporting me when I go home. Um, and, and we can help get those services lined up. And of, and of course, I'll be sure to uh, leave my information if, if, it, if that's ever something that happens. And, or if you just have questions about starting post-surgery or anything like that. Okay, and I, I think you may have addressed this other question. They, they wanted to know if somebody needs short-term nursing care outside their home, so in a facility, but only for you know a few weeks or a month or so, do you have that as an option? Yes. So, um, and and that would be um, we we would have to provide that in that home setting. But yes, nursing. Uh, a typical plan of care under home health is normally about 60 days. It doesn't, it, that doesn't mean that you get 60 visits um, throughout that two month period, but that's a normal time, uh, time frame for a plan of care. There are times where it's shorter, where it might be 30 days, perhaps it's two weeks. There's not a need that takes it beyond a two week point. Um, Medicare and insurance just wants to see that, hey, there is a need, there is a skilled and medically necessary reason for us to be there. So it can be a shorter period of time. It can be a longer period of time. There are folks and patients who um, who have wounds that take longer to heal and we're in there a little bit longer helping them address that wound. So yes, to a very long winded explanation for it can be a shorter period of time for just nursing services and even just therapy as well. Okay, but I think what this person is asking is they're not asking about in-home care. They're saying, what if they need to be in a rehab facility for a limited period? Mm, there, there are facilities that do offer more of a respite stay, a shorter stay. Um, mm -hmm. And Eileen, I don't know if um, you know what our respite looks like at this point. Nope. So I, I, I want to clarify the question, Gary. Are they asking if if they're in a rehab and if they need wound care, is it something that they can contract with us to come in and do the wound care? Is that? Well, I think what they're asking is, let's say somebody's had an operation. They can't go home. They need right. to be somewhere where they're being taken yeah. care of, mm -hmm. but only for a few weeks. Yeah, well, more, more than likely, if they're in a in a skilled nursing facility, they're going to get those services at that mm -hmm. time. So if they're in an inpatient, I, work, I worked at Mount Vernon Nursing Rehab Center for eight years, so I know a little bit about it. In a short-term stay in a skilled nursing facility, they are there to get those, those in, 
inpatient services such as PTOT, speech therapy, that's all being done in a short-term stay in the in the facility and Medicare is if Medicare is covering that. Okay. So but once, I, they, I, I, so once is, they, they need more, that's when home health can come in and and continue that um, once they, they return home from the skilled nursing facility. Okay. Does that answer the question? Well, I guess the question was, does Goodwin Living provide that in, you know, the skilled nursing yes. facilities? We we do for the for the residents um, okay. uh, that live there. That's part of that life plan, Gary, where they have that whole continuum of care. Now, every once in a while, um, based on availability, we might be able to admit somebody that's not a not a resident for short term stay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And your physician and and of course those who are working with you for any sort of procedure um, will put that plan in place. Of course, some procedures might be one where you could go home that same day, or Gary, as as this question prompted, maybe a stay. In, in a facility for some time to, to get back to strength and, and function before going home. Um, so, so yes, Goodwin does offer that for, for our residents. Um, so any other questions before we move on to hospice? No, I think that's it for now. Okay, great. So I, I wanted to, there's actually a, a couple of other um, programs that we offer before we get to hospice. Um, that's not included in here. And I guess my slides need to be updated. <laughs> um, we are, we also, we provide home care, um, a, which is a private pay service. You know, I'm, I'm sure you are familiar with, there's so many of them on in the community, you know, like Synergy Home Care. Um, we have our own home care agency that primarily um, office service, home care services to the residents within the, the three communities. Um, however, we're looking to maybe expand that service at some point to the outside community. But right now, um, we actually have um, nice relationships with several of the, the private duty home care agencies in, in the community. So I wanted to mention that. And then um, stronger memory. Uh, I'm, Maybe you are familiar with that. I think uh, Jessica Fredrickson, who's the director of our brain health program, has been um, active with your group. Um, Stronger Memory is a is basically a, a it's a brain health program that helps to improve brain health. Um, our C CEO Rob Liebrick uh, helped design um, and create this program. It's um, it's it's really designed for everyone, whether you have a diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment, or you simply want to just strive to thrive as you age. Um, it's it's very simple. It's simple exercises like reading, writing, and arithmetic um, that helps helps retrieve. Um, it helps retrieve, stimulate the brain and helps retrieve memories. Um, it's it's also very effective, fun, and social. So we have a there's a small department of three people that that um, work in strong memory and they host and they either they host they host group settings they hope one-on-one -on -one settings um, you can do this these exercises on your own um, but what they have found that when there is a group of people that come together to do the exercises with virtually in person there's an extra added benefit of the socialization that goes along with helping to improve brain health um, so I wanted to make sure I included in those before I got to a hospice. Um, I'll stop there and see if there's any questions regarding any of those programs. Gary, I can answer at this point. Well, there's there's been a one follow up, which I'm talking about the the home health. You know, several times you've said it's provided you know to your residents. Uh, um, so, so it sounds like. I living in my house, no. uh, you know, can't no. contract with you to have somebody no. come home, to my home or home, is that not the case? Is, 
home health is available, and I, I'm sorry for the confusion. Home health is available to the community. Okay. Um, home, home care, which is private duty home care, which is which is non clinical, non skilled. You know, it's 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 help with bathing, dressing, all your activities of daily living. That's that's something we don't provide right now. We provide to our residents, but not to the com outside community. Okay, but the skilled nursing and, and therapy services, anybody can contract with you guys, that, and they don't already have to be a member of Goodman Living. Uh, that's right. Uh, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks for same, clearing same, that up. Okay. <laughs> and the same is going to be true as we talk about hospice. Um, so a little, a little background. Um, Hospice, we actually, Goodwin Hospice has actually been around since 1998. Um, and from 1998 to 2015, we only provided hospice services within those life plan communities. In 2015, we opened up and we started taking the hospice services out to the larger community. So today we're, we're very happy to say that we do provide hospice care to obviously people in their homes, people in other assisted livings, skilled nursing facilities, um, wherever we, wherever somebody calls home is where we're providing hospice. We always like to say that hospice is a service, not a place. Um, there is some confusion where people think they have to move in to a Goodwin community to order to, to provide for the hospice services, that's not that's not true. So we we are out there providing these services to a really wide swath of facilities and homes in Northern Virginia. Um, so I wanted to make sure that that was um, that was understood here. Um, so I, I you know I I recently did I was on the panel that um, Wendy and Seal invited. Uh, we had a whole nice panel that last month in, in the Fairlington um, facility. And I talked about medic hospice and I, I found a definition of hospice because you know, it's not an always, it's not an easy thing to talk about, but I wanted to um, just start with, with, with Medicare's definition of, of the hospice benefit. You know, Medicare, the hospice benefit was established in 1983. So it's really kind of a recent benefit. Um, to provide Medicare beneficiaries with access to high quality end of life care. Considered the model for quality care for people facing a life limiting illness, hospice is a patient centered, cost effective philosophy of care that utilizes an interdisciplinary team of professionals to provide compassionate and expert medical care, pain management, and emotional and spiritual support expressly tailored to the patient's needs and wishes. So I, I love that. I think that encompasses exactly what hospice is. Um, so every hospice provider, whether it's Goodwin or another hospice group, is really basically providing more or less the same services. Um, Goodwin Hospice, we have, a, we have several other kind of, I call them ancillary services. That, that increase the comfort um, and, the, and the assistance of the person that's needing the services. We do have a, an end of life doula service. Uh, if people are familiar with birth doulas. These are end of life doulas do the same thing. They, they, they assist with the end of life care. They're not clinical, um, but they are, they are a big support to the family and, and for the, the patient. We also provide um, massage therapy for the patient. So Goodwin, out of the good, goodness of the Goodwin Foundation, we, we will pay for three sessions of therapy, massage therapy for our patient. Um, and quite often uh, the families will contract additional, additional sessions. And we also have a program now called Full Circle, which when somebody does pass away, this is an organization that will reach out and, and, and offer a basic service of helping them start to, to kind of close the estate. So all of those come through with the additional traditional support that you get and the care that you get 
through hospice. Um, so, so with that said, again, hospice is it's comprehensive. Um, you know, the team considers is is makes is made up of the medical director, an R, a nurse case manager, um, a social worker. Um, we have volunteers. Uh, we have spiritual counselors. Um, and that's the whole, that's kind of the whole interdisciplinary team. Um, so in order to, to access the hospice care, basically um, it's, it's, it's a, an order, it's a physician's order. And from your, from your physician, your primary care or your oncologist, whoever might be involved. And, and then it's our medical director um, assessing the eligibility and writing the second order. And that's basically what the process what the process is. Um, you have to have a prognosis or diagnosis of six months or less based on the trajectory of the disease, the state of disease. Um, obviously people live longer, they, they, they live shorter, um, but our philosophy has always been that, you know, um, hospice is about living, really not about dying. We have seen people like finish their writing their books at the end of their lives. We help them with that. So, um, Again, it's 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 always a, a a topic people don't want to approach, but it is a it's a it's a very comprehensive, beautiful benefit when you need it. So I will stop there, and see if there's any questions about hospice. So uh, there is one. Um, this person ran into a situation where a hospice provider didn't have an available person within their zip code. Do you cover all of the Northern Virginia area? How, how yeah. far does your reach expand? That's a great question. Um, we, well, here, uh, here's well answer. We are not everywhere. We, we have a good swath. We, we cover all of Arlington, all of Falls Church, Alexandria, Alexandria City, um, Fairfax, Fairfax City. We go as far west as um, the v Vienna Oakton line. Um, we're we're small. We're a smaller hospice. I mean, we're a mid-sized hospice at this point. That the the emphasis is ba is based on quality of care, not quantity. So we have grown incrementally, and when um, we don't want to overachieve and not be able to service the, the and provide the quality of care that we have. So. Yeah, there'll be instances um, that there might be areas like we will go down as far as um, the Lorton, um, uh, Fort Belvoir area. We don't go any further than that. So, you know, the best thing to do is is um, just ask, you know, if there's a when you call in to the to the admission line, just to ask if they cover that zip code. But a lot of our providers that we work with now know know what that know what that territory is. And I'm happy to share, if you go on our website, there actually is an interactive map. So you can type in the zip code and then you can see whether or not we cover that area. If somebody's outside the area you cover, are you able to make uh, references to other hospice facilities? Sure, yes, we are we're able to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we have one more follow-up question on uh, home health, which is how quickly can you provide that if somebody finds themselves in need? That's a great question. Um, when we are starting home health, after we obtain the documentation, such as a physician's order, such as uh, just demographics as to where your address is, your insurance, and we've processed that, uh, we start within 24 to 48 hours. So it's it's quick. Our um, we, we understand that timing is really essential here when you need that support when you go home. So, um, so it is within 24 to 48 hours. And it usually takes us, um, depending on insurance, um, it typically just takes us hours to, pro to process the information Sometimes insurance requires an authorization that can delay this a little bit, but it's it's typically not longer than a business day for us to, to get that processed. 
Okay. And for both um, hospice and home health, you know, Medicare is the is the primary payer, but we also work with um, different forms of insurance as well, mm -hmm. with the Medicare Advantage plans and the and the private insurance plans. And and um, as being a non for profit, um, we also we try to do the charity work. You know, if somebody does not have a payer for hospice, then um, we're going to try to take care of that person regardless. Regardless. Okay, we've got another question uh, about medical transportation. Do you transport people from hospital to their home, or is that something they'd have to arrange with somebody else? Yeah, yeah typically, if they're coming out of a hospital, the hospital is making those arrangements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we don't. We really don't get involved in, in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Typically, um, as Eileen mentioned, that um, that case management team is is working on that to to ensure that there's yeah. that plan in place to get folks home, um, and then we'll stay on top of what that timing looks like in order for us to get started with services. Yeah, and 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 I also mentioned, um, I think this that's a good point. You know, we work with um, closely with the hospital systems. Um, we are a preferred provider for Virginia Hospital Center for both hospice and home health. So we, um, you know, we we have a presence there. Um, I know on for the hospice side, um, we have nurses and social workers that will go in and have conversations with family members if they're on the fence about hospice or they just want some information regarding hospice care. So that's that's part of the the partnership. Um, you know, where, where we want to be able to assist in, it in any way we can. There's obviously no commitment to use our services. It's it's really from an education and and a comfort level with the with the the patients feeling comfortable with uh, and making sure that they're getting the best service um, that they can get. Part of the part of the benefit of with Goodwin is if uh, I'll give you an example. If we go in to VHC with a hospice referral and they're not eligible, you know, we can we can see what home health might be able to do for that patient and provide some type of continuum of care if it's not hospice care. So it's nice to have all of those things that we have to offer somebody. And we also work closely with the Ionova Health System as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Eileen. Any other questions before we change slides, anything um, not health right now. and care hospice. Okay. All right. Well, we will forge ahead here. So just to, as just to, to um, end the session, whether you prefer to age in your own home, which you, which you are choosing to do or move to a campus to enjoy community lifestyle, good living is here to help you realize your dreams and age in the places and ways you wish. So, um, I hope um, again with the with these home and community based services. If you're not living in a Gubin living community, you're able to access. We're able to access these. You're able to access these services such as hospice, home health, um, strong memory, and um, and that's that's something that's a, a portion that's a portion of Gubin living that's going to continue to grow, um, and the the. CEO feels very passionate about bringing those services out into the community and continuing to grow them. Yeah, I um, just as Eileen mentioned, uh, these services are available to you. Um, you do not have to be a resident to utilize uh, our our home health, our hospice. Um, Goodwin Living at Home, of course, is there for support, stronger memory. Um, so please feel free to reach out to us with questions. Let us know how we can support you all. Um, being that this is such a great organization that supports individuals aging in place, we, we would love to support you um, as well. So don't hesitate to let us know how we might be able to help and any other questions you might have. Okay. So well, I did see the question about um, is Goodwin Living planning to 
to develop other facilities well? That's a great question. We, um, when we purchased the Hermitage, if you guys are familiar, um, I think there's about seven acres of land that came with that. So they are, they have announced and a couple months ago that they are gonna build another life plan community on the same campus as the View Alexandria. Um, we also have um, acquired land out in the Chantilly area. Um, and the idea there is to build a, um, a not a life plan community, but a rental community, a month to month community with uh, independent living, assisted living and memory care. I don't know what the town frame of that is, um, but the life plan community will, I think they'll start to build that next year. Okay, we've got a, another yes, question. Um, do you have a pre play prepayment plan so that people can secure a space in one of your facilities when they are ready to move in? So, so um, yes, the, the short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they basically put down a deposit. Um, now, um, there's a lot of people uh, that have done that. And then that, and I think that was really the impetus of building a new life planning community because I think they have waiting lists of you know several hundred people at any time. Um, so you can come in, you meet with the sales counselor, and um, you can actually designate what type of apartment you want. And based on the type of apartment is what the deposit, how much the deposit will be. Um, and I believe once you once you choose and move in that deposit. Um, I think it's fourth. I think it's applied to the to the to the contract, but I'm not I'm not totally sure about that. But it's just a deposit, yeah. That that will guarantee that will put you on a wait list. Okay. Uh, next question: If uh, Medicare or insurance don't cover some of your services, do people just pay that out of pocket, or how does that work? So when it comes to home health, um, let's say your insurance does not offer benefits. Um, we are going to let you know, of course, we'll let the, whether it's case management at the hospital or a skilled nursing facility, um, or even you directly as the patient, we're going to notify you of that. And the goal is to, to be able to find coverage. So if we can't fully cover this, then, um, or or if we are in a position where it it would cost money out of out of out of pocket in order to utilize our services, we would then make a recommendation for another agency that would be able to provide coverage. Um, there is what it what we can do with. Um, outpatient in the home, therapy in the home. Now, not to make this any more confusing than services, you know, all these home services can be, but I do want to share this with you all because it's a, a great benefit under Medicare. If you have utilized your Part A benefit, which is that home health piece, you and you then have a Part B benefit to utilize. We can come in under Part B and continue therapy in the home under Medicare Part B. And this is covered 80% by Medicare and a secondary insurance picks up the remaining 20%. So that could be an instance where there is an out-of-pocket fee if you continue therapy and you have that 20% remaining amount um, that that would be owed for uh, for services. But our goal is to find coverage for you so that you don't have to pay out of pocket. Now, is there a time limit on uh, the home health services? You know, Medicare would cover so many days of assistance and, and that's it, or is it open-ended? Such a good question. So in the eyes of Medicare, they want to see that it's medically necessary 
and that it's skilled care and that it's something that a patient cannot do on their own. So our clinicians are working to ensure that their documentation supports the need for them to be there. And with this being said, Medicare is going to continue to look at this to, to be sure that we're justifying our ability to be in and, and serving patients. Um, so again, a, a typical plan of care is around 60 days, but let's say that you need more support the clinician will be advocating and documenting that it is still medically necessary for us to be in place and provide that support. Um, and then let's say that your time is winding down with services, but you still feel like you need some support. Again, that outpatient in the, th in, in the home concept where you, where you continue therapy in the home is available to you under Medicare Part B. And let's say you just want some support with exercises. Maybe it's not quite medically necessary, but you just want someone to come in and help you with exercises. We can look at finding a um, sort of a, a personal trainer concept to come in and support you in the home with your exercises, with your home exercise plan. So um, again, the, the big thing is that Insurance, Medicare, they want to see documentation that supports that it's necessary for us to be there. But our clinicians will advocate and, and ensure that they are there um, for as long as it is necessary for us to be there. And just so you know, we're about eight minutes to 11. Great. Yes, thank you. So in one of your early slides, you described Goodwin Living as a faith-based organization. What does that mean? So we were, we were, um, we were, we were founded, I believe, by the Episcopal, by, by the Episcopal Church. I think it was, um, you know, I think it was, a, um, I think it was women, it was a women's group affiliated with the Episcopal Church that that, that um, got involved, um, that saw a need for this kind of care and this kind of, uh, these kinds of communities. And, and they, they have, we had the backing of the Episcopal Church. Um, so that's, that's the faith, that's the faith-based part of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's no, there's no, um, you know, you don't have to be a member of that faith. But, you know, you, we're, we're multi, multi, you know, there's multiple faiths in our organization. You don't have to be a part of that organization, the, faith, the Episcopal Church, to be to be a member or to be a resident at Goodwin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't see any additional questions. But I'm sure somebody's going to come up with something. Well, um, this has been wonderful, and thank you for the opportunity. What a great group! Um, we're happy to share our contact information if anybody does have any questions, um, or you know, as we as we end this, if, if people think of things they want to ask us, we're happy to share our contact information with you. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much for having us here today. Okay. Well, I certainly want to thank you as well, and both of you for very helpful information. Obviously, you've got lots of questions. And so are you leaving your information, your contact information someplace in the chat or? I will do that right now. Yeah, I'll go ahead and. Um... Okay. So if people have some questions, and since this will be on the yeah, ANV YouTube, um, I think, Gary, that people can pick that up there too, can't they? Um, in the the chat information? No, that won't be part of the YouTube video. Okay. But, you know, um, they could call the office. I'm sure Wendy can put them in touch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or I'm sure, you know, 30 seconds online, Googling okay. Goodwin Living, go pull up your contact info. 
I and I saw Wendy nodding there, so um, she reinforced that um, it's available if people want to uh, get in touch with the the uh, office. So next week, Wednesday, October sixteenth, on Coffee and Conversation, the title is VA two hundred and fifty effort, and um, I guess that we'll be talking about our country's two hundred and fiftieth birthday, and so Annette Benbo who is a board member of the Arlington Historical Society. We'll talk about Arlington's planning effort and how to get involved. So it's called the VA 250 effort, which is obviously Virginia, Arlington, Virginia 250 effort. So sounds like a good program. So be sure and tune in a week from today. And meanwhile, <laughs> enjoy this beautiful weather and we'll see you all yeah. next week. Thank, thank you so much again. Take care now. Okay.